Hello, for those who I haven't met yet, I'm Bob Chedro, home with music. I used to build concertinas. They don't have time for it anymore. Plus, there's plenty of guys that make great concertinas, so I'll let them do it. But I do accumulate concertinas here at the shop, and um, I'd like to run you through a few. Some are, I play. I'm really an Anglo player, not an English player, but I will honk around on what I have. Uh, some of them are for sale. Some of them I rebuild. And uh, give me a call if you have any interest in any of these things. Okay? If you have a few minutes, just hang in there. I'll do the best I can. First, I'll show you one of mine that I built. This one's not for sale because I really, I think I'll keep one. Uh, bells are nice and tight. I figured out a very good way to build bells. Incidentally, if you're interested in how I build a concertina, you can find it online. Look up Tedro Zephyr Concertina. There's a whole detailed internet uh, photo show that displays tools and equipment. Before there was an internet, I taught myself to build. So if there's a way to build concertinas, I don't know what it is. I did come up with a way that resulted in an instrument like this. So it's been a stepping stone for a lot of people. So anyway, that's a 30 button Anglo CG concertina. This is a Trinity College this is a modest little concertina. Uh, it is, the size wise, it's pretty much like a traditional instrument. It's not bad, it's inexpensive. $300 price range. The, uh, the faults I see with it are that the, the buttons sink all the way down below the surface of the end plates, which I, I, I'm used to a stop there. The action's not bad. Uh, maybe a little stiffer on the bottom row. I have gone through them and changed the springs on occasion, but it's a lot of work. The bellows are okay. I don't think there's much leather in it, but they're, they're fairly tight. The reeds are not real fast, um, but it is a 30 button concertina and is inexpensive. There's no particular order in these instruments that I'm showing you nor will there be any further editing of this film. Film. This is a 1950s era Wheatstone concertina, and uh, this is a nice little box. Um, nice, bright-sounding reed. As I said, I'm not a player, so don't expect anything. Uh, good bellows. Air button seems like it could be a little larger, but you know that's that's okay. The bells are in very good shape. I don't think it was played much. I believe this instrument was sold by the Matuswitch fellow that lived in New York City. He was, I think, one of the Wheatstone's major importers, 50s, 60s. I'm not really sure of the age. Metal ends, uh, serial number three five five eight four, Wheatstone. Uh, that's twelve hundred dollars for that one. This is a Jones English forty-eight button concertina. Now, I don't perceive this one was played very much at all. I have to say this: um, bellows are in good shape. Uh, it, really, it wants to be tuned. I haven't done anything to it. The fretwork is quite nice. It's very good shape. It's a C Jones. Some of the Cagnoscenti among you will, will know the history of the Jones instruments. Been played, good shape, nice tidy instrument. Uh, it's untuned as is, uh, just like it is, it's $850 English concertina. If you want it tuned, different story, uh, perhaps you tune them yourself, I don't know, but if you are capable of it, it's a nice little box right there. What next? What next indeed? Another 30 button Anglo CG concertina. This is the uh, Clover. Uh, one of the 
three songs that I will play. Nice Box, designed by Vin Bucker. It's, uh, this is a new one. Um, good bellows, leather, nicely done. They're all the same. You can, get, you can get them in black or you can get them in a wood grain finish. Um, nice cheese head uh, end bolts. Dimensions are good. The geometry is good. The weight is good. The uh, bellows are tight, tight as a tick. And uh, it's a nice instrument. I, I like his work quite a bit. This is the Clover. Clover, 30 button CG. More. Here is a Crane Duet concertina. I do not play the Crane Duet system, so I won't suffer you through it, but uh, it has the right sound of English style reed. It has very tight bellows, very good condition. Oh God, I don't know how many buttons on this. Two, I don't know, there's a bunch of them. If, you, if you're interested, email me, I'll count them up for you. Uh, raised ebony ends, I guess they're ebony, but they're raised ends. Fretwork is in really good condition. Uh, nice piece, serial number 354-12. There's more. I hope you're bearing with me okay. This is a nice piece. This is a Bastari. Um, I think Bastari concertinas are really, they're, I think they're undervalued. It's a nice piece. Um, the reeds are nice in this one. I think the Bastari reeds, I like them better than the later stodgy reeds. Uh, it's a nice little piece. This is a, uh, uh, I guess this would be a, a baritone, maybe a tenor treble. But it's a low pitch, Bastari. Um, very good condition. If you've had the chance to look inside one of these Bastaris with the 48 buttons, it's a masterpiece of engineering, the way the reeds are mounted. There's a plate in there that folds out. I mean, it's, it's really, really very nice. It's a very nice instrument. I, my first instrument was a Bastari in the day. We're going to say now that the day means before the internet. So I was fooling around with these uh, in the day. As a matter of fact, I was convinced at one point that I was the only concertina player in the entire world because I never met anybody that liked to play. And it was I had been playing for many, many months until I discovered the Concertina in Squeezebox magazine, which was a tremendous publication. I want to say now that if some old timers out there, if you ever had your name mentioned in the Concertina in Squeezebox magazine, or you got a typed letter from uh, Stinson Balin. He, would, he was an old guy that built concertinas and, or handled them and squeeze boxes, I guess in the 70s, maybe 80s. He was a cranky curmudgeon, but he would type letters on his typewriter and mail them to me. I'm sure everybody out there that's my age uh, has a letter from Stinson Balin. If you don't, you missed something. There's more. This is the minstrel concertina. This is essentially is a very much like the clover there's a few things that that i mean like $1,400, $1,500, I think is what everybody sells it for. It doesn't quite have the chamfered edges that the Clover has. Uh, the buttons are Delrin. They're not capped. It's just straight Delrin. Uh, if, if anything, the, the edges to the buttons are a little sharp. Um, on the ones that I sell, I, I actually kind of finish the buttons down so they're a little smoother to the touch. As far as the response of the reeds, it's fine. I don't have a problem with this at all. It's a nice looking concertina in your basic black. It looks like a concertina. It is a concertina. More. Yes, why do I have all these? Who can turn down a concertina? Uh, here we have a duet. This is the Elise. This is the Hayden duet system. Brian Hayden uh, came up with this system. And... Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, this is one of Wim Wacker's creations that he has assembled. And maybe I don't know where it's assembled. Parts are made in China. It's okay. It's big. It's a little big. Uh, it's along the same lines as the Rochelle and the Jackie and the Jack. This is the duet version, the Hayden duet, which is different than the Crane duet and the McCann duet. I think that's what killed the concertina. There was just too damn many concertinas, and then we had rock and roll, and that was the end of that. It's my opinion. Anyway, uh, uh, these are, what are these? Like almost $500. They're nice. They work. Um, I, they're fine. You know, where are you going to get one for that price? If you're interested in concertina, it's a great stepping stone. Many people go to their graves without any better instruments than these, so don't think that these are something that you maybe would like or maybe would not keep. They're all fine. Um, here's a nice piece, this for sale. This is one of the very, very few handfuls of baritone Anglo CG concertinas that, that I built. And it just positively shakes in your hand when you play these low notes. I love this one. Um, this is on consignment. It's really orchestrally nice. And I did a real good job on the bellows. They're limber and they're tight as a tick. It took me a long time to figure out how to make those bellows. Uh, and I give the method away. You can go find it on the internet. Look up Tedro Bellows. Why you would want to take all that time making your own when there's plenty of makers, I don't know. I did it. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? I guess that's really, that's all I have that I'm willing to show. I have my shelf full of failures over there. Many of my early instruments I didn't like. Some of them turned out good. Some of them didn't. Some of them are pretty but sound terrible. But we won't bother going into that. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, call me up, buy some of this stuff. What do I need with all these concertinas? I sell banjos and guitars, and we repair instruments and fiddles. And, oh, and I do take trades. It's, that I do take trades. If you find that you've got, oh, a pre-war Martin 0018, you can certainly trade it in on a concertina because in our little shop here in Alabama, we sell all sorts of things to all sorts of people. We're on the cusp of the deep dark south. So, uh, I would also recommend that you go ahead and find my Instagram page, Tedro, and sign up so that you can follow the shop, because why not? What else are you going to do at 3 o'clock in the morning? And uh, you can call me anytime. Well, no, you can only call me during business hours in Central Standard Time. But you can text me anytime you want, because I'll just answer in the morning. I hope you've enjoyed this thing, and uh, I hope there's not too many mistakes, and I don't think there's any food in my teeth because I've had nothing to eat all day. So uh, thank you for watching and go find me on the in on the internet on the interweb. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.